This is MJ. I love Star Wars and I bet you do too. I'd like you to join me for a fully operational analysis of Ahsoka Tano's actions at the end of the Clone Wars. Now, if you've been around the block as long as I have been, you uh, <laughs> came to know Ahsoka as a character uh, all the way back in 2008, was it? When the movie premiered? Uh, the Clone Wars movie, that is. And you may have been dubious about her as a character, how much you liked this young pup running around, calling Anakin Sky Guy, getting called Snips, uh, you know, trying to push their th her authority on the uh, clones and have them listen to her, and, uh, you know, getting put in her place because of that, and, uh, you know, she's had a very interesting story arc, um, but then, uh, and at the time, if you don't know, everybody, or most everybody, was expecting that Ahsoka would have to die in order for Anakin to become, you know, Vader eventually, uh, in Revenge of the Sith. And some people even speculated that he might kill her. And that's not what happened in Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7 that we got years after the show had been canceled, after the Disney, uh, or Lucasfilm, yeah, the Lucasfilm sale to Disney and all that. Uh, there was even an Ahsoka book that came out that had uh, information about Ahsoka's life after Order 66, and it was, I don't know if it was actually designed to be a lead into Rebels or not, I guess it was, and this is going to be uh, full spoilers if you uh, if you hadn't guessed by the fact that I'm just throwing out information here, but um, her actions in the Ahsoka novel lead her to Bail Organa and to being, or, you know, back to Bail Organa and to being Fulcrum. And, uh, you know, there have been many Fulcrum agents um, working for the Rebel Alliance, and she appeared as Fulcrum, and she was the main Fulcrum contact at the time of Star Wars Rebels. Then she eventually joined with the Ghost Crew. Yeah, I think, thought, I can't remember if it was at the end of season one. I think it was at the end of season one, or maybe the beginning of season two. I don't know. But then we got to see. Uh, her in action there then you know the whole Star Wars Rebels series happens and then after uh, Rebels ends we get to see her uh, in a glimpse post Return of the Jedi and she's in this different form of Ahsoka the White and her you know life continues on from there but when all this stuff was made when everything else was made we didn't truly know what the plans were for her in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Then we finally get in 2020, Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7, and we get to see her fate uh, altered, and well, I don't know if it was necessarily altered and changed, but we got new insights into what happened with her. And she's still one of my favorite characters because there's so much interesting stuff about her, so much good about her. She takes and absorbs all these good things from all these different characters. Um, she's had you know, Anakin was her master, but she learned from Obi-Wan, she learned from Luminara, she learned from Asajj Ventress, she learned from so many people, both Asajj when she was good and bad, um, as I've, uh, I, I demonstrated before that during, uh, the, um, oh gosh, the, I don't know, the Spice arc, the Martez sisters arc, uh, she pulled a maneuver sim very similar to Asajj Ventress in order to escape, uh, from the Pikes when she was captured by them, and that echoed something from, I think, season one of, uh, the Clone Wars, which was pretty pretty cool to me, and it's kind of fun that that's like a, a deep cut type thing that they went back and reused an idea or a concept, um, and Ahsoka had been there to witness it, and then she does it herself. Um, just to, to, to me, that's just a mark of how interesting she is and how much she's grown and changed and, and her capacity to, um, I don't know, to improvise and to uh, just be able to survive by taking in things from other people and to me that's a really neat concept again we're going into uh full spoilers for star wars the clone wars season seven if you saw or back when i saw the episode i can't remember if it was 11 no it must have been like 10 when uh no it could have been 11 when ahsoka freed maul on the you know jedi cruiser or whatever it made me start thinking about what are the consequences of her actions? What are the consequences of her releasing Maul back into the universe off of that Star Destroyer? Was it the Jedi way or not? Because even though she protests that she's not a Jedi, I believe she only says that because she doesn't believe in what the Jedi currently are. She doesn't believe in the failed, I'm not even going to say policies, but morals of the Jedi. And 
Uh, that's something that I agree with her on because the Jedi are purposely flawed and it's supposed to make them uh, more interesting and it's supposed to make the downfall of the Jedi and the coming of the Dark Times inevitable and a consequence of their, you know, hubris and I don't know what else to kind of quote Luke from The Last Jedi. Um, and that's something that's very interesting to me because they say that you're not supposed to meet your heroes and you shouldn't hear worship and things like that because heroes let you down, heroes fail, heroes turn out to be not all they were, uh, you know, thought to be in the beginning. And, you know, sadly that's true. And I love that aspect of the sequels. I think that's a, or the prequel trilogy rather. <laughs> I don't love how it's done in the sequels, but I do like it in the prequels. And to me, the story of the Jedi and the story of Star Wars is, or at least it was for a very long time, the tragedy of Anakin Skywalker and his fall and his ultimate redemption. And Ahsoka's story really adds so many dimensions to the tragedy of Anakin Skywalker. And if you want to think about it this way, you know, she was introduced into Star Wars The Clone Wars. She was introduced into Star Wars as an idea because on a meta level because... Lucas wanted to have this extra element thrown in where the Jedi gave Anakin a Padawan so that he could learn to deal mm -hmm. with his attachments, mm -hmm. so that he could learn to let go. And how does that square necessarily with, um, you know, Luke saving Vader and uh, saving the galaxy from Sidious for a time? Uh, with love and with attachment? I don't know. Actually, maybe that's something to discuss next time. <laughs> um, and I really mean next time. I'm not saying it as a throwaway and then I'll never talk about it again. But I want to focus more specifically on what were the actual consequences of uh, Ahsoka letting Maul go and kind of trace that through history because it, I, I've thought about it, but I, hadn't, I haven't thought about it that hard. So let's start from here. Ahsoka is on whatever, this Venerator class, Star Destroyer, no, it's not Star Destroyer, it's a Republic Cruiser, Jedi Cruiser, what have you. Um, it's all the same thing. It looked like the Empire to me. And while she needs to escape, and while she needs to, or because she needs to escape, and because she needs to survive um, and save Rex and you know do these good things, it is good that Ahsoka survives. It is moral that she should fight for her life and defend herself against these clone troopers and the thing is she's not even really killing the clone troopers you know as much as she possibly can i mean she, she's trying to she's preserving their lives as much as she possibly can and she saves rex you know gets the chip out of his head um you know, obviously doesn't kill him and the two of them fight alongside each other to get out but in order to help her do that she releases maul who does uh, again defensively um mow down a bunch of clone troopers men who she was whose lives she was trying to save and, uh, I mean, again, morally, if somebody's trying to kill you, uh, I, I think most of us agree that you have the right to defend yourself by killing them, right? Even Maul, even this, you know, upstart failed Sith Lord, uh, is, in a way, acting in self-defense while all these clone troopers are killing him. He may be enjoying it, but he's still acting in self-defense and, you know, going about things, I guess you could argue morally, which I'm not actually here trying to do I'm just kind of you know using the uh the example the extreme example to, to point out that there kind of really is a moral case for him to be doing what he's doing um but and, and I had wrestled with this I wasn't sure what were Ahsoka's intentions you know did she know I perhaps because this is a prequel so to speak uh, I knew Maul was going to be out in the universe he was going to be out in Solo he's going to be out in Rebels he was going to be out in uh I guess Rebels is where his story ends, really. And uh, it kind of, you know, perplexed me. You know, what is she doing letting them all out? Doesn't she know how bad this can be? And even if she needed his distraction, his diversion, in order for her to live and survive, uh, you know, is it morally justified? I'm not 100% sure. And st that's still something I, I you know, kind of wrestle with. But um, maybe by examining what happened as a consequence, I'll know. So Maul gets out. He goes and he uh, rejoins his criminal criminal uh, syndicate, um, which I can't remember is it the exchange? I can't remember the Shadow Collective. He kind of keeps 
uh, moving with the Shadow Collective. The Shadow Collective works uh, as a criminal empire, which there will always be criminal empires as long as there are things that are illegal because black markets are prohibition creates black markets and black markets create opportunities for people to amass wealth and power to themselves by doing things that harm people for now or uh, that harm people. Uh, and it's probably, a little, I'm oversimplifying, but here we go. So, uh, you know, Maul runs all those things. He runs that criminal underworld. Eventually, um, he runs into, uh, and, and who knows how many people he kills through that. Who, many, who knows how many people's lives he hurts by uh, running his criminal syndicate. And I don't know how deadly Crimson Dawn is, per se, but they affect, you know, the lives of certain people. Um, that we get to see uh, in Solo, and um, they are working for, uh, you know, the Empire, more or less, and we get to see um, how Solo kind of uh, helps the Rebel Alliance in a, a way he didn't want to because he's working against this criminal underground unit, which maybe then, in a way, uh, her actions help to fuel, literally, the Rebel Alliance, uh, even when she's not working or I guess while she is working for them directly, but from another way, the the force kind of brings this in to her. But anyway, regardless, the point is Marvel's or Marvel Maul is working over this criminal enterprise and you know causing harm to people's lives, and uh, then yeah, then we would see him in uh, Star Wars Rebels after that point, and what happens there uh, is that he wreaks some havoc, he, uh, you know, manipulates Ezra Bridger, and he, I, I wouldn't argue, and it's been a couple of years since I've seen it, uh, but I wouldn't really argue that he, ha, um, you know, brings Ezra closer to falling to the dark side, but it's interesting uh, how he affects his journey, and, I mean, ultimately, Kanan is able to keep uh, the kid on the straight and narrow, but uh, I, you know, I definitely think there is, uh, you know, some issues for, uh, for Ezra and how he starts using the Force and how he starts treating the Imperials that he's fighting against. And uh, I remember, I don't remember if it was season three or four, but he, uh, he like, you know, kind of murders uh, an Imperial guy in a walker in like, you know, very dark side fashion. But ultimately, he pulls back from that, and, uh, you know throughout Rebels, uh, or throughout the Maul's interactions in Rebels, uh, you know, he blinds Kanan, and, uh, then later on, he, uh, I can't remember if he, how close Maul comes to being in contact with Vader, or if he's fled by the time Vader descends, um, can't quite remember how that goes, but it doesn't matter, because then he's off to, uh, ultimately almost find, um, Luke, and he has a last confrontation with Obi-Wan where his life finally ends so close um, but so far away from, you know, everything he always wanted. And, hmm. Well, now that I've uh, kind of said it all out loud, it feels like thematically or conceptually, you know, Ahsoka releasing them all was a bigger deal than I had or it's a bigger th deal you know, thematically or conceptually, but when you think about what he did after, and of course we don't have all the details of what he did after, and of course uh, you know running a criminal organization that's gonna you know hurt people by you know doing bad things to them or you know di directly you know murdering people and uh, you know causing pain and suffering and things like that and you know profiting off of that is bad, but. I mean, anybody could have done that, not just Maul, and he'd already created the criminal infrastructure. Somebody would have risen up even if he had been killed um, at that time, I would think, because uh, that's usually how power systems work. Once one is, uh, well, there's always one to crave the power, so to speak, so that once the one who has the power is eliminated, the next person in line kind of steps up and fills that, that role. So, but I don't know that Maul... Uh, was able to do that much more negative stuff in the galaxy than, uh, you know, somebody else could have done, or I'm just saying I don't know those things wouldn't have happened without him. But then again, we have things like the interaction with Maul leads to the Darksaber getting to, um, 
I'm sorry, I can't remember her name right now, from Rebels, and then she gives it to Bo-Katan, uh, and then ultimately, like, it arrives in, uh, or it, it's picked up by the Imperials, as we see in, uh, The Mandalorian, and things like that, so, I don't know, it, it, <laughs> Ahsoka's involvement and Maul's involvement through Clone Wars, and, you know, his resurrection in Clone Wars actually adds a lot of more interesting weaving back and forth of different elements throughout Star Wars, which is a lot of fun, um, and it was at least enjoyable to, uh, have the question for myself and to go through this exercise thinking about what were the consequences of what she did, and, I mean, the biggest ones are definitely Kanan getting blinded, uh, which wouldn't have happened, um, and then, I guess, Bo-Katan ultimately getting the Darksaber, uh, and then ending up in the Mandalorian, but we don't know the full context for that, um, except for, I think Mandalore had been restored, and then it was destroyed, and now we have, you know, the Mandalorian, um, partly because of that, and, uh, you know, restoration of that culture to its ways, and, you know, maybe the Rebel Alliance getting, you know, the fuel it needed in Solo to, you know, keep fighting the Empire through, you know, basically stealing the Coaxium from, uh, Crimson Dawn, which was under Maul's control, which, you know, it only could have been under his control at that time in that way, with those certain, you know, people doing what they were doing because of Ahsoka having to let him go, so, I don't know, kind of interesting how that all works, and I don't know if it, I don't know if it's supposed to be, like, the mysterious workings of the Force or what that is, but, uh, that's kind of neat to, uh, think about. Uh, I'll have to reflect on this before I close out and see if there's anything else I come up with. It's been a day or so, I've thought about it, and I can't really think of anything else, uh, to add to this question of what was the aftermath of Ahsoka freeing Maul, uh, it does really seem like the Force worked in mysterious ways and kind of used her leaving the Order, her freeing Maul, her surviving Order 66 and all this stuff to all work towards the greater goal, the greater good of um, balance being restored of the Republic or the Rebellion defeating the Empire and stuff and then, you know... That all went out the windows for the Seawolf trilogy. But I'll talk about that now. I actually, uh, I'm going to be slowing down releases of uh, Fully Operational because I have so much else going on. But I think that the episodes that I'm going to be releasing are going to be more enjoyable, more thought-provoking, and um, just better content than me trying to review something every week. I will be focusing on, like, ideas and, like, not so much lore, uh, of Star Wars, but like, well, I'm going to, I'll share with you my plans. And if you're done, uh, you can go ahead and check out here. Cause I'm just going to talk for another minute or two about what I would like to do and what I'd like to see happen. I have a very long relationship with Star Wars. We can get into that later. Uh, that is a story for another time. And I really won't tell you about that anytime soon. Cause it doesn't really matter except for just, I love the stuff and it's just, it means so much to me. But that being said, I think that I have like, I don't know, nine, to 18 episodes planned out already of stuff I'm going to talk about, and it's just all from a flash of inspiration. I'm planning to watch the uh, whole Skywalker saga, you know, including 7, 8, and 9 uh, again, and uh, come at it from a couple different perspectives. Um, and then there's, like, I kind of want to look at the movies overall, the story of Star Wars throughout the nine movies, and you know, I'll talk about where it went wrong and things that I don't like and things I do like and things that were really good and that I hold on to. But I'm also like, I kind of want to explore what the force is and how it works. And I might bring in, you know, solo or not solo, but like Rogue One. Well, maybe even solo, who knows, but maybe, you know, like Rogue One because it had some insights into the force, I guess, with, uh, Chirrut and, uh, Baze. Anyway, um, I've only seen the movie like twice, maybe just the one time. <laughs> um, anyway, and, uh, yeah, I, 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 I really do love Star Wars and I'm going to be talking about it probably for the rest of my life. So why not do it with some intentionality and like slow down and not worry about rushing things out at a certain pace. I'm not doing this for fame. I'm doing this for fun and for the pleasure and for, uh, just the enjoyment I get out of, you know, kind of meditating on Star Wars. And that's what fully operational is going to be, uh, as more topical stuff comes up, like in October, um, uh, Mandalorian season two is going to come out. Like I'll, I'll cover that here. Um, and then I'll just kind of let, uh, like topical stuff be like interludes in between these larger, longer, um, not self-indulgent, but like, um, I don't know, kind of ponderous observations about what's going on, uh, or like uh, about like the, like I said, the nature of the force and things like that in star Wars and just kind of, is it consistent? Does it make sense? I know Lucas didn't really have everything planned out, um, for the prequels 
or the original trilogy. He kept changing things and making things shift, and that's not necessarily a criticism, although I thought it was bad before. But, um, you know, the sequels weren't planned out very well, and I'm not sure where that goes. But there is some interesting stuff that I think they offer. And I think those things are there if one is willing to take a broader view of things, so to speak, and, uh, you know, explore uh, <laughs> the nature of them from all aspects and all sides. So, yeah, that's what I plan to do. Um, you can come back here for reliably, uh, you know, consistent, whether that's every two weeks or once a month or whatever, Star Wars stuff, it'll be here. And uh, I promise that it'll be interesting, at least to me. If you enjoyed this, like, comment, and share to help me grow. Don't forget to subscribe to keep current with each release. Chat with me on Twitter at MJ underscore scribe. Visit mjmunoz.com slash podcasts to find the multiple feeds in which I analyze Star Wars, tokusatsu, comics, and more. Visit mjmunoz.com slash support for links to my Redbubble and coffee pages so you can help me keep going and doing the things that I do. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Until next time, be well.